Hello everyone, welcome back to Engine House Creations. Today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to do the charger play inserts using Silhouette Studio. Prior to this video, I already did one using Microsoft Word. And this is very simple to do. All you will need to do is create it using your, any software of your choice. You will cut them out and put them on your charger plate just like that. And these are great for bridal showers, weddings, um, baby showers, any event. So let's get started. All right, guys. So here we are in Silhouette Studio. Now, I do want to point out some things. I do have business edition. So if you have any other edition, your computer might look different than mine. And I also have version 4.2. I think right now version 4.3 it's out, but you can upgrade if you want to. I haven't upgraded mine yet, but um, another thing, if you don't have a Cameo machine, you can still use this software to design all your items. If you use a uh, business edition in Silhouette Studio, you can save your items as an SVG and open it up with your Cricut. Check down in the description bar. I have my affiliated link. The business edition right now, it's on sale for $48. And if you don't own a Cricut or a Cameo machine, you can still use this software to design all your party favors and just print them at home and, you know, cut them by hand. You don't need your machine uh, to cut this stuff out. A lot of the stuff in general, I still cut out by hand. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, when you first open up your document of Silhouette Studio, you're going to see that your white um, mat, and I, I truly apologize right now, I don't know all the icons, names, and stuff like that. I just work with the software, and but I will try my best to make this as beginner-friendly as possible. When you first open up your document, your document might look like this, and it looks like it is a full 12 by 12 sheet of paper. Now, you need to make sure you go to your paper settings and put it that you're using an 8.5 by 11 paper. Most standard size printers, that's what it's printing. So I know a lot of people have problems. They start designing everything here. And once they print it like Andrina, you know, a lot of the stuff is getting cut off. So it's because you're working on a 12 by 12 and, you know, the ruler is up here and you'll see how big your paper is. So. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your paper settings and that is on the right, um, the first icon on your right and it's going to have a paper. You're going to click on that and then page, it has like three icons in the page setup. Once you're there, it's going to say size. On the size, you're going to click on it and you're going to click letter 8.5 by 11 and you're going to see that, you know, it's going to be an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. And right there you have the orientation. You could either put portrait or um, landscape. I'm going to leave it on portrait. Um, your cutting mat, you could leave it on 12 by 12. Uh, you could either cut this uh, charger plate insert by hand or with your machine. And it's going to say show cut border. And it's also going to say show print border. You can turn on your print border if you want to. I turned it on just in case if that helps. And that's all you have to do as of now. Then you will go to your shapes. Your shapes are on your left. It has like a circle or square and stuff like that. You will click on your shapes and then you're going to click on the circle and you're going to come over and make any size circle it doesn't matter and um i also know a lot of people have problems that when they use the shapes and if they don't go back and select the arrow the you're going to keep continuously keep creating more and more shapes so to fix that problem you go to the settings icon that it's all the way on your right bottom corner it has like a little wheel and that is your settings you're going to click on there you're going to go to tools and i have um all my settings where it says choose select if you put continue drawing shapes that's th that might be the option that you have on now so if i put continue drawing shapes this is what happens so you could get what i'm talking about i'm gonna click okay this is what happens when you have that option you if you go to shapes and click on shape and you make a circle and then you try to go do something else you st and then you click anything on the screen it's going to continuously keep drawing circles so you don't want that you want to make sure you are at the settings and you will go to tools 
and you will go where it says after creating a shape you're going to click where it says choose select and click apply and click OK now every time you make a circle it's just gonna go back to the arrow if that makes sense so let me delete these and let's continue to um, create this okay so your circle on your screen it has to be 8 by 8 now when you have your circle selected you just click on it and on the top is gonna say width and height so on your width you're going to select that and you're going to type 8 and enter then on your height you're going to select that and you're going to click 8 and enter and now you have an 8 by 8 um, circle I also want to point out that you can uh, design all around your gray area, but before you print, you need to make sure that you put it inside of your paper. But if I want to design all my stuff outside of the paper, you are more than welcome to do so. And I always do that. And then once I'm done, I'll group everything together and bring it to, um, you know, wherever I have to print. Okay, so let me not keep rambling. I just want to make sure that, you know, I just want to let you know like silhouette it's not hard to use but so I have this right here and now I always like to have a solid um, another color behind my charger plate and then I put another shape in the front and I use another color so for now I am going to use this circle and I'm going to go to the paint panel uh, it's called the uh, fill panel which that is on your right all your icons, your third icon should look like a paint um, palette. So you could pick any of these colors here and I'm just going to click on pink, right? After that, I want another circle to be in the front. And you're more than welcome to just create this one like this if you want to. It just needs to be an 8 by 8 um, circle, but I want to create another circle to go in the front. So while I have my circle selected, I am going to go to the offset panel. The offset panel is looks like a double star and on my it's on your right corner and it's, it looks like a star and it says offset. You're going to click on that and I'm going to click where it says internal offset. When I click on internal offset, it created another circle. You might not see it because my circle right now in the back is pink. But if I select um, the inside circle and I'm going to color it white for now so you can see how it looks see I have two circles if I color the back pink and I color the front white I have two circles see that but I don't want the middle one to be white. I'm going to actually put a background on my middle one. So I am, you're going to go to Google and you're going to, you're going to save your backgrounds. You just go to Google and look up any background of your choice. And then you have to uh, make sure you click on that image. Then you're going to right click it and save it to your computer. I have several videos on how to save images from Google. Or you can go to Etsy and purchase your backgrounds. Now, you will go to File, you will go to Merge. Now you're going to go look for the background that you would like to add. I'm, let's see. I'm going to click on this one and then you're going to click OK. After you bring in your backgrounds, it might come in big, it might look um, small. But just you know put it smaller and I want my middle circle the white one to have this background now there's different ways that you can do this uh, the easier way for you to do it is I'm gonna put it my pink circle over here so you can see what I'm doing my white circle I'm gonna have it here and I'm going to put my background in front of it I'm actually going to right click and duplicate it so I can show you both options. You could either put this background in front of it, expand it, and your white circle is behind it, and you're going to select both. 
you're going to go to the modify panel the modify panel is also on your right and it looks like a square and a circle you go there and it will say crop once you click on crop you see how your circle now has that um that background so that is option one option two is i i should have duplicated that background but i didn't i'm going to option two is you can use your property dropper your property dropper it's on your left bottom corner looks like a medicine dropper so to do that you will click on your circle then you will click on the dropper on your left corner after you click on the dropper you're going to click on your background and then your circle should take in the background that you select. It's going to look like this. But all you do is you go to the paint panel, your third icon on your right. There's three options on your fill panel. It's going to have, uh, like there's going to be three squares on the top. So you're going to click on the third one where it says fill pattern. You click on that one. You're going to go to advanced options. And where it says aspect ratio, click on the first F. Once you click on that, you see that it looks perfectly fine. So those are the two options you can do to um, fill in your backgrounds. And if I'll be for sure making more silhouette videos so you can see it is not hard at all. So now I deleted all that so you don't get confused. Now these two circles are going to look like this. But now I don't want my lines of my second circle to look like this. I want them to go the other way. So while I'm in the fill panel and I'm in the third option right here, the fill pattern that it has the first one, second. First one is, I'm going to let you know, it says fill color. Second one says fill gradient. And the third one says fill pattern. I'm in the fill pattern and I'm in advanced options. Um, I want my lines to, so right here where it says rotate pattern, I'm going to click on one of those. So make sure your circle is selected and where it says rotate pattern I'm going to rotate it I want my lines to go like this now you also have the options where it says scale you can scale this down or you can scale it up so you have those options I'm actually going to scale it down and I'm going to leave it like this there's also an option that says pan pattern if you click on pan pattern you're going to have like a little circle in between your background and your you can move your pattern around. So those are your some of your options. So I'm just going to leave it like this. And I need to make sure that both of my circles are centered. I'm going to select both of my circles. And uh, the icon that says open the transfer panel. It looks like three lines. I'm going to click on that. And right there is going to say center. I'm going to click center. So to make sure my, um, you know, my circles are centered. I'm going to right click both of them and I am going to group it together. Once they are grouped, they will move together like this. Okay. Now the next step that you can do, you're more than welcome to start putting your individual images and all you will have to do is go to file and merge and bring in your images to save PNG images. You will go to Google and look up any any image you want, but make sure you put PNG PNG image have a transparent background and you will save that now. Um, I want to put like a frame kind of clip art here in the middle. And you would just go to Google and look up frames. I already have some saved, so I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Merge. And then I'm going to look for wherever I have that saved. and then click OK. You see, I have this one saved, but see, I don't want this color. I'm actually going to trace this so I can put it a different color. So all you will have to do is now you have to go to the trace panel. The trace panel, it's um, 
it looks like a kind of like a butterfly. It's under the line panel. It was like it's my icon is one, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth panel. You will click on that and it will say select trace area. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to come over here and make a square around my frame. Let it do its thing. Now you need to make sure your entire area turns yellow to be able to um, trace it. So right here on my threshold, I'm going to go up on my threshold and make sure everything turns yellow. And then I'm just going to click where it says trace. That's all I want. I want to trace that shape. I'm going to actually remove my image and delete it and now i am left with my traced um shape let me move this over so you can see my traced image once you're here because it doubled my image like it gives you two outlines all you have to do is click on this select it you're going to right click it and release compound path that is all what you would do is the back um you can delete it and it was gonna have like extra particles all around so i'm gonna move this to the side and delete all these little smart small particles now i'm going to bring my shape in here and i want my shape to be um gold in the back and white in the front the way you're going to do that is you're going to have this one gold so again i'm going to go to google and get a, go a gold background i'm going to save it but when it's a background you and you have business edition you can easily just go to google and copy it from google and paste it into silhouette but i have some saved so i'm going to go to file i'm going to go to merge and i'm going to look for a gold background I'm going to use that one or that one and click OK. Now you have this one. Remember, I taught you, y'all can easily crop this. You know, put this over your shape, select both of them. Make sure that your background is, you know, covering your entire shape. You select both of them. You will go to your uh, modify panel and you will go to crop and your shape is like this you know the back will be gold but i still want the front to be white so i'm going to do an offset i'm going to select this shape i'm going to go to the offset panel that is the double star i'm going to click on internal offset and i am going to select the shape that it just created go to the fill panel it looks like a paint panel and make sure that it's white now once you be doing shapes sometimes it's going to have like a red outline don't be scared all you have to do is select your shape go to the outline panel it's under your fill panel it looks like a whole bunch of lines click on that and then you're going to go into the line color and click on the no colors right next to the dropper and now your outlines will be not red so i'm going to right click and group both of my shapes together i'm going to bring my circles back in the page so you can see and i'm going to click on my frame and you know size them however you want them sized and i hope you guys are following along with this i try to make it as easy as possible okay to me i'm okay there i'm going to select everything and i'm going to right click and group it you see now if you want to keep adding more stuff you will go to file you will go to merge and then you will look for any other images you would like to add i'm actually going to add some flowers Click on your shape and click on OK. I mean, image and click on OK. So these flowers, I'm going to add some here. 
And I'm actually going to show you something else now that we're here. Okay. Now you see that my pink in the back does not match my flowers. And I would like my pink in the back to match my um, flowers. And because I have all this group, I'm going to select everything. Right click and ungroup. And... I think I still have more stuff group and ungroup. Everything should be ungroup. My last circle that's pink, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to my fill panel, the one that looks like the paint panel. You see that you have a dropper right here. I'm going to click on my dropper and I'm going to click on the rose. Right? And you see how it turned the color of my back circle the same color. I'm actually going to use another color because y'all might think it's black, but it's not black. So I'm going to go do it again. Going to hit on the dropper and let's use this pink right here. And see, it matches my flower. And that is your dropper that it's in your fill panel. You have two droppers. You have a dropper in your fill panel and you also have a dropper on your left. And that's for the patterns. Okay, now let's keep on moving. This flower, I'm going to right click and duplicate. And I'm going to right click and flip horizontal. And I'm going to put it over here in the bottom. Uh, I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And put it there. See? And now you can add fonts to here. The way you will add a font is you will click on the A that it's on your left. And then you're going to click on the A that it's on your right. And you're going to select the font that you want to use. You can also download free fonts from the font.com. Now, when you download fonts from the font.com, you have to make sure Silhouette Studio is completely closed and then you download all your fonts and then when you open up Silhouette Studio is going to show. If you have Silhou Silhouette Studio open while you're downloading fonts, they're not going to show in your software. So um, let's look for a font here. Once you select the font, click anywhere on your screen to start typing. On typing, select anywhere, put your font or whatever you typed in, you know, inside your design. And hold on, I'm actually going to select all this and right click and group it and all you have to do to fill in the color of whatever you type you will select your font you will go to the fill panel and um, select any color and the color that I just used of the flower it's already selected so you would um, you know put this according to the size that you want it to be And right now it has a red outline. So all you have to do is go to your outline panel and click on the color. And the one next to the dropper is the no color and like that. So again, I'm going to put Andrina and then I'm going to type something else. Again, you will select the A on your left, your A on your right. Click on the font that you want and start typing. Unselect, make sure you select anywhere else on the screen so I can unselect it so it could get off the edit mode. Then I'm going to put that wherever you want. Select it again, and then you're going to go to your um, fill panel and then click on the dropper if you want to use any other color that will match these flowers. And let's say, like that, go to the outline under your fill panel. And make sure it is no color. And that blue outline will come off once you group everything together. So I have it like there. 
you will select everything and right click and group it. And you could keep adding more stuff if you want to. Um, let me see if I have some rings. You will go to file and merge again. It's basically the same steps over and over. And then you are done. You know, you're going to design it however you want. Make sure everything, you know, again, select it and group it. And you are more than welcome to cut this out by hand. It is just a circle, especially for the people that don't have the machines. You know, you can just cut it out by hand. Now, if you want to do a print and cut, the way you're going to do it is you're going to go back to the paper settings, the, the page setup panel. That is the, the first icon that is your paper. You're going to click on that and then right here in page setup, you have three icons. You have the number one, two, and three. You're going to click on the third one. And where it says style, you're going to click on that and you're going to turn on type one camel and that is going to turn on your registration marks. Now where it says thickness, bring your thickness all the way up so your registration marks are very dark and that it's all. You're ready to cut. But see how it has like a red square that is where it stops cutting so some of your circle the machine's not going to cut because it's outside your registration mark so you can let the machine cut out some of it and then you will cut out the other part by hand but like i said this is very easy to cut out by hand and you are done now i also get questions on how do you print the print icon is on top of here so the print icon it's all the way on the top you will click on that and then you will select the printer. And I like to print on um, premium presentation paper mat. So I will go to my preferences and I will click on the printer that I'm using. And then document size, you know, this is an eight by 11 paper. Paper type, premium presentation paper mat. I will click on okay. And then I would print. And you need to make sure you print with your registration marks and then um to save this you will also go to file you will go to save as save to hard drive and if you have business edition you have the option to save it as a png image as a silhouette studio a svg this is why i said if you have a cricket you would like to have business edition to save it as a svg if you are sending this to a customer, you need to make sure you save it as portable um, document format, abbreviation for PDF. PDF, your customer, you know, will receive this and, you know, it's going to be compatible with their um, computer or if they're going to print somewhere else, it'll be compatible with any software that they're using. Because if you send them this as a silhouette software um you know file they're not going to be able to open it if they don't have a uh, silhouette studio so anything that you're selling or anything that you send it to your customer save it as a pdf but when you send it to your customer don't send it don't save it with your registration marks turn off your registration marks and right here you will turn them off and that is all. So I'm going to get, I'm also going to show you how to do a quick mock-up as well. And this video is probably going to be so long. I very I apologize. You know, it's probably long for now. But okay, let me show you how to do a mock-up. So my circle, I'm going to make it smaller and put it on the side. Now, I will get a background. So I will go to File, Merge, and look for any background that I want to add there. Go to Pictures backgrounds they say I'm just going to use this wood one so I could do it fast I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to select my background and make it bigger. Yes, 
you will go to Google and look up charger plate PNG, you know, this one right here or a gold one. You're going to right click it and save it to your computer. Then you will go to file. You will go to merge. And when there are PNGs, you have to save it to your computer. Then you're going to look for wherever you save the charger plate. Click on it and click OK. Now you have a charger plate. Now this one, I'm going to put smaller. And oh, you need to right click it and bring to front. So it can be in the front of your plate. And now click down your shift key with your circle selected and click on your charger plate, right click and wait, right click and group it. Hold on, why did I do that? Right click and group it together. And now right click and duplicate it. Right click and duplicate and keep doing the same thing. And now you will put your logo information on it, your name, your business name, whatever you want to add here. I usually will put my logo in the middle. And if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you already know how I do it. I will put my logo somewhere here, but I will also add my name all around. And I have several videos on how to watermark your work. Then from here, you will save this file, save as, save to hard drive. And right here you have a save as type and you have different options. You could just save it as a JPEG, like a regular image. And then you can post it all around social media. And now I hope that helps. And now let's get to printing and putting it all together. So see ya over there. Okay, here we are. I printed it on 65 pound cardstock and I have an inkjet uh, Epson printer. And all you have to do is cut this out and place it on your charger plate. Okay, so here we have our charger plate. You can find these at Dollar Tree or Michaels, Joann's, wherever you want. And I do have a link down below of my affiliate link of Dollar Tree as well. Then you would just place your charger plate insert. These are just for decorative purposes only. You do not need to glue it on top. The customer or in your event, they should not be eating out of your charger plates. And then you can find clear glass plates also at Dollar Tree and you will place that on the top. And then they could eat from here. And that's basically all you will do. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Of course, I will be bringing more silhouette videos. I personally only design in Silhouette Studio. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. And comment down below if you have any more questions about this tutorial. Or comment down below anything else you would like to see from me. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified when I upload any more videos. And if for business inquiries, you can also always email me at andrinascreations at yahoo.com or Facebook and Instagram, Andrinascreations. So again, thank you so much and bye-bye.